Tonight, a cozy conundrum as the city works to tear down the condemned building. It starts coming down on its own. And a massive merger on the range. Five colleges become one. What it means for the 2,900 full-time students and the future of higher education. Plus, the survivor of an apparent hit and run in Superior is on the lookout for the woman he credits with saving his life. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. More turmoil for downtown Duluth's Pastory Terrace building. Bricks and piping falling from the former home of the Cozy Bar, forcing city leaders to block off the sidewalk in front of the building. CBS3's Emma Quinn joins us from the newsroom now. Emma, when did they first discover this problem? So, Kristen, Tony, we spoke with Kate Mandale, the city's public information officer today, and she says the city discovered this issue while they were doing a routine site check Wednesday afternoon. She says they put orange fencing up around the East First Street building as a safety precaution. She wasn't sure exactly what caused the pipe to detach, but Vandell pointed to the weather as a possible reason the bricks have been falling. She says the freezing and thawing we've been seeing this January can cause expansion behind the bricks and pop them off the building. The Duluth Economic Development Authority bought the building after it was tax forfeited by the previous owner. The, the building was badly damaged by a fire in 2010, and since then, Vandell says they've kept a close eye on it as it's seen few instances of vandalism, something she has said, says that has been draining money. Um, this not only continues to be at an expense for the city to take care of this, but also because the orange fence that you see around the building, that's a fence that we're renting by the day. The city has been seeking permission to demolish the building as they've had interest from developers in buying the land, but that effort has been railroaded by appeals from the building's former owners several times, including just this week when the Duluth City Council sent back a demolition contract to city administrators while they wait for the latest appeal to play out. And Vandell says a judge is now asking the former owners to put up a $50,000 bond in order for the appeal process to move forward, but Vandell says there's no deadline on when they have to have that money by. And we all also reached out to the previous owner's attorney for comment, but we did not hear back by news time. All right, more to come on this. Thanks, Emma. All right, let's turn over to the weather with Dave. Dave, there was like this giant orb suspended in the sky today. It seemed to be radiating some sort of heat or something. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, it's like, kind of yellowish. Like yesterday, it popped up for a couple of minutes yeah. and took off once again. And that's the way the weather has rolled for just about two weeks. Warmer than normal, cloudy as all get out, and, and little spits of flurries here and there. We get that again tonight. Latest low pressure system is in the Dakotas. It's coming our way. Flurries tonight, a rain and snow mix possible for our Friday. So the day planner for Friday says we go through the entire day with 30% chances for that rain snow mix to pay off. Any accumulations from said mix might only go to about a third of an inch, but that's enough to slick up the roadway, so do travel cautiously for Friday. Daytime start, 15, finish at 28, the normal's 21, so another day with warmer than normal temperatures. But as we get into the weekend, we may really push the thermostat up by Sunday and crack 40, which will be the denouement, the climax of the big warm spell. Temperatures will tumble by Tuesday, and we'll talk about for how long and how far. Yeah, a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Census Day is just two months from tomorrow. Local and state governments have been working hard to make sure they get a complete count this year. Part of that process is hiring people to go door-to-door, -door, encouraging folks to respond. CBS 3's Jenna Wells explains the process. Kristen and Tony, St. Louis County's goal was to hire 2,400 census workers this year. As of this week, they've reached about 55% of that goal, but they still need a lot more people to apply to help the community achieve a complete count. St. Louis County Census Coordinator Kathy Wilson says recruiting workers for this year's census count has been more difficult than in 2010. She says the unemployment rate was much higher then, and more people were interested in applying. Wilson says the job is perfect for any Anyone with good communication and people skills, regardless of their current work situation, it has a flexible schedule and pays up to $24 an hour in St. Louis County. Wilson says it's crucial that the county fills these positions and they're working hard to make it happen. It's really important to have census takers who are going to go out um, and follow up with people who don't respond to the census so that we can make sure we get a complete count. 
So we're trying to advertise these jobs as widely as possible, uh, working with our partners, our community organizations, putting stuff on our social media to try to get the word out about these jobs. You don't need prior experience to apply, but you must find your own transportation to the neighborhoods you would be visiting. The job would begin in late April or early May and would run through the summer. Wilson tells me they're filling these positions as an important part of making sure that the county can get a complete census count. The census helps the community receive federal funding and affects our political representation. It tells us a lot about who lives in our area. Tonight at 10, I'll take a closer look at that application process. We also heard from Douglas County's Census Committee today. While they couldn't comment on their exact need for workers, they said they are still looking to hire. According to the Douglas County Clerk's Office, they pay $24 an hour. The Enbridge Line 5 reroute took a step forward today. Mashland County leaders decided the city of Mellon can sell a piece of land to the company. Mellon previously bought the land back in 1991 from Ashland County for the price of one dollar. A condition of the sale was to leave it for public use. But today the Ashland County Board of Supervisors approved the sale of the same land to Enbridge for one million dollars and the county will receive half of that. Mellon could see an additional 3.2 million dollars if the company decides to use their land. This all comes after the Bad River Band filed a lawsuit against Enbridge back in July to keep Line 5 off of their land. You can head to our website for more information on today's vote. A limit has been set for one of Minnesota's most popular walleye fishing lakes. The safe harvest level for 2020 has been set at 150,000 pounds from a lax lake. That's the same as it was last year. A joint committee of Minnesota DNR and other biologists from eight Chippewa bands that have fishing rights on the lake set the limit. State licensed anglers can harvest just shy of 88,000 pounds. Tribal fishing is subject to a 62,200 pound limit. Hermantown is getting closer to choosing its next superintendent. School officials announced they've narrowed it down to six candidates, 11 people originally applied. The finalists include five people from Minnesota and Wisconsin and another from Wyoming. One of them is current Ordean East Middle School Principal Gina Cleave. The interviews start tomorrow night and will be open to the public. Check out our website for more details. Five Iron Range colleges hit by declining enrollment plan to merge. Minnesota State Higher Education System trustees endorsed the merger yesterday. It includes Hibbing, Itasca, Rainy River, and Vermilion Community Colleges, as well as Misabi Range College. The schools have a combined enrollment of about 2,900 full-time students. They already share a president and some other services. But even with the cooperation, the schools competed for students and had their own budgets, academic programs, and sports programs. Hibbing Community College's interim provost says he hopes working together will be a good thing for the schools and the students. This merger is all about opportunity. It's about opportunity to expand access to education throughout our region. It's about opportunity to create seamless opportunities for our students. All the campuses would stay open under this plan, but there's still some work needed before the schools can move forward. We'll hear about what changes students could expect coming up tonight at 10. A superior man is recovering after he says he was hit by a car Saturday night. From his hospital bed, John Dromshauser told us about the very last moments he remembers. I saw the street signs, the markers and stuff like that illuminate, which gave me the indication there was a car behind me. I turned around and looked, and I saw the car, and I was like, why does this, ha this person have their brights on? He broke his leg, ribs, and got a large gash to his head. But Dromshauser says it could have been much worse if it wasn't for a woman who he claims saved his life. He wants to thank her in person, but he needs to find out who she is first. We'll tell you how he's trying to find her coming up tonight at 10. Border agents seized $450,000 worth of drug paraphernalia near International Falls. Officials say they found it in a rail car headed for Rainier, Minnesota, Minnesota earlier this month. No word on exactly what items they found. The loose mayor will attend the State of the Union next month as a special guest. Senator Tina Smith invited Mayor Emily Larson to attend the president's annual speech. It's scheduled for February 4th. Smith, a Democrat, made her first stop in Minnesota as a senator in Duluth. She says she and Larson have worked together on many issues, including affordable housing. 
Larson says she's proud to work with Senator Smith and honored to represent Duluth in Washington, D.C. You can watch the State of the Union right here on CBS3 Tuesday night. Governor Tim Walz and Minnesota House Democrats have put the long-running dispute over affordable insulin back in the spotlight. They unveiled a bill just ahead of the 2020 session, which claims to combine the best of both Democratic and Republican proposals. Negotiators with the House Democratic and Senate GOP majorities were unable to come up with a compromise that they could have passed during a special session. Speaker Melissa Hortman says the bill will be fast-tracked in the House and called on Senate Republicans to pass similar legislation. Drama at the beginning of the second and final day of the question and answer phase of the Senate impeachment trial after the Chief Justice refused to read a question. Chief Justice John Roberts blocked the question from Senator Rand Paul, which included the name of an individual that some conservative media outlets have tried to out as the whistleblower. This comes as Senate Republicans are hoping to move to vote on acquittal tomorrow. The Senate, Demo Senate Democrats will push for votes on witnesses first. So far, only two Republicans have publicly said they intend to support calls for witnesses. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, if you're a native Spanish speaker, should you read to your child in English or in Spanish? The answer may help your child become a better reader. Normal high temp is 20. Today we made 21, so technically the warm spell continues. And it should culminate with 40 by Sunday. But after that, temps go back to normal, even a little bit cooler. And we'll talk about those trends coming up after our break. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From wastewater to surface water and Minnetonka to Superior. Discover how the University of Minnesota is protecting our state's most precious resource. This Valentine's Day, Numi Jewelers is featuring two ways to a woman's heart. A real rose trimmed in pure 24 karat gold that lasts forever and a pendant necklace for just $99. True love is guaranteed at Numi Jewelers. Welcome to Medical Insight a weekly health care feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Dr. Jason Buffington introduces lifestyle medicine, which advocates therapeutic lifestyle changes rather than medication for the treatment of chronic disease. The American College of Lifestyle Medicine uh, recognizes six main factors that we really focus on uh, for helping people uh, change their behaviors, changing uh, to a healthier diet, being active and uh, exercising, decreasing tobacco and moderating alcohol use and any other uh, toxins or drugs in our uh, uh, environment, helping with sleep, uh, stress reduction, and also healthy relationships. When a patient comes in uh, for a consult with a lifestyle medicine provider, we'll go through those uh, six health the factors of lifestyle medicine. A lot of times it's just one or two that we need to focus the most on. Worldwide diet currently is the number one cause of disease and that tends to be the one that people uh, need the most help with. All of our appointments are 40 minutes which is a lot longer than a typical doctor's appointment so we can really tease out the factors and uh, their health goals. Dr. Buffington says unhealthy lifestyle factors have led to skyrocketing disease rates. Lifestyle medicine is a new approach that helps target the root cause of disease. We know now uh, through many years of science that probably 80 to 90 percent of the diseases that we're getting as Americans are related to unhealthy lifestyle factors. 72 percent of Americans are overweight or obese. About 14 percent of Americans have diabetes. Lifestyle medicine hopefully will help people change their unhealthy habits so we can prevent that from skyrocketing further. Lifestyle Medicine is now offered at the Essential Wellness Center in Hermitown. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. This Medical Insight was brought to you by Essentia Health. To learn more about the services we offer, visit EssentiaHealth.org. How can we help you, Eleanor? You think you're possessed? No. My fetus is. At night, there are sounds inside me. She screams. Your daughter in your womb. Yes. We beg you to hear us, God. We beg you to hear us. We beg you to hear us. It's the devil inside me. The Evil Season Finale, tonight, 10, 9 central on CBS. CBS 3 News is brought to you by Fond du Luth Casino. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. 
Well, most towns did continue that warm spell here today, although there were a couple of exceptions. So normal high temp is 20. That's what Hibbing hit. A little bit cooler towards Grand Rapids at 19. Aiken had 18. But the rest of us ran towards things like temperatures like 25 in Ashland and 28 degrees for Orr. Well, the warm spell's been with us for about two weeks, and it has a couple more days to go. And its grand conclusion will be on Sunday when a lot of towns, especially in Wisconsin, hit 40 degrees. After that, though, Temperatures will go back towards normal and a couple of degrees cooler than normal for at least a couple of days. We'll show you the seven-day forecast in a bit, but of course we're going to show you right now the current conditions at the airport in Duluth where it's 20. We have a mostly cloudy sky up aloft like it's been for the last two weeks and ought to set clouds tonight. Yet another chance for flurries. Tomorrow, a little follow-up rain-snow mix action before things do dry up by Saturday. Wind currently is southerly, 9 miles per hour. Relative humidity, that is 78%. And current regional temperatures are running from the teens into the lower 20s here in Minnesota. Most towns in Wisconsin are going upper teens to the lower 20s. And it's in the lower 20s currently for the upper peninsula. Low temps tonight here probably will try to dip into the teens for a lot of towns and hover around 20 degrees for others, again, as this warm spell continues for another couple of days. Well, with the latest low pressure system bearing down upon our region, right now we're eyeing up a thicker set of clouds up above the area here and a chance for snow showers yet again. We're seeing some of those just south of Hayward and Siren and south of Hinkley as well towards Pine County in Minnesota and another little blob starting to pop up towards the Brainerd Lakes region. 30% chance some of this will tickle your town as we go on through the night. And it could turn into a rain and snow mix, I think, for tomorrow, much of the day, all day long perhaps, but it won't add up to much. Most towns getting about a third of an inch worth of any precip if it happens tonight and tomorrow. And then once we get towards Saturday, well, I think this low pressure system and that mix will be gone and higher pressure will try to nudge in and if not clear us up, at least dry us up for both Saturday and Sunday. And because it's coming from a high pressure cell, we might even see a little more sun come Sunday, if only briefly. Forecast here for tonight in Minnesota, those low temps, they go from about 10 towards Ely and Babbitt to 19 around Park Point and the rest of our towns in between. Minnesota gets really a 20% chance for flurries. It is a little bit bigger in Wisconsin, Michigan. It's a 30% chance with low temps there from 17 to 20. For tomorrow in Wisconsin and Michigan, high temps will hover around 30 with a 30% chance for that rain-snow mix we were talking about. And in Minnesota, it's also a 30% chance with high temps that'll go from about 26 towards International Falls to 30 down around Moose Lake and Willow River. Our extended forecast shows temperatures nudge upwards to 40 degrees on Sunday, like I mentioned, with a partly sunny sky. And then by Monday, still warmer than normal at 28. It's Tuesday when the cool down comes and the warm spell ends finally. Fairly sunny with overnight low temps down to the single digits. Okay, thanks, Dave. More than 12 million kids in the U.S. speak a language other than English at home. But can learning to read first in their parents' native language affect how they learn to read in English? Leanne Valdez has that and more in this week's Eye on Parenting. Reading is a fundamental skill that can help your child succeed in school. But with 22% of the U.S. population speaking a language other than English, at home, can those parents still help their child become proficient English readers? Researchers at the University of Delaware and North Carolina State University studied 312 kindergartners and examined their early Spanish reading ability and their ability to understand English vocabulary words and follow English spoken directions at the start of kindergarten. They then measured their English reading ability every year until the fourth grade. The social scientists found that children who had strong early reading skills in their native Spanish language when they entered kindergarten experienced greater growth in their ability to read English from kindergarten to fourth grade. This suggests that early Spanish literacy skills are strong predictors of later English reading skills and a reminder that reading to your child is important in any language. Latino children from Spanish-speaking homes are the most rapidly expanding segment of school-age population in the United States, making up nearly 78% of English learners enrolled in U.S. schools. Kelly's here now for a look at what's coming up in sports. Yeah. Did you know that it's already Super Bowl Sunday? That doesn't seem it's possible. Crazy. Yeah. This Sunday, it's a couple days away. Plus, <laughs> we're taking a closer look at the one of the hidden gems of UMD hockey. That's next.
Melt the cold winter with hot gear from Duluth Lawn and Sports. CBS3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Toyota. New state-of-the-art dealership. Same President's award-winning service. KohlerToyota.com. You'll have the greatest health care ever. Ever. Those pre-existing conditions are You'll protect. be spending a lot less money for much, much better health care. As mayor, Mike Bloomberg helped expand coverage for 700,000 more New Yorkers. As president, everyone will have access to affordable care. He'll cap health care costs and ban surprise medical bills. Real plans, not empty promises. I'm Mike Bloomberg, and I approve this message. Fond du Luth Casino is giving the house away. What? With over $100,000 in prizes. Every Thursday and Friday night from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., we're drawing 35 prize winners for their chance to win up to $1,000 cash. Wait, what? How many winners? 35 winners every Thursday and Friday now through March. Stop by the Players Club or log on to FondaLuthCasino.com for all the participation details. Thursdays and Fridays, we're giving the house away so you'll have a great time out at Fond du Luth. Find all your winter gear this season at Masabi Recreation. You'll find everything from fat bikes, skis, jackets, and more. Masabi Recreation, located in beautiful Virginia, Minnesota. This winter, beat the cold with an up north hat. Michigan made. These warm hats are expertly stitched with soft fabric, perfect for protecting you from whatever Mother Nature throws your way. Visit our website today at upnorthhats.com. The famous Meat Lovers Pizza from Pizza Hut. Over a pound of meat and cheese for just 10 bucks. It's more pepperoni for your penny, more beef for your buck, more... You get the idea. Get yours delivered now at PizzaHut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. America's most watched network. Tonight, starting at 7, only on CBS3 Duluth. Then, stay tuned for CBS3 News at 10. In the Army National Guard, family means everything. Our parents, they're really supportive that all five of us would join. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard instills pride that you and your family will share. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about part-time service. I don't like bullies, and I don't like you. Star Trek Voyager. Find heroes and icons only on My Night. Come on down for big laughs. Hello, everybody. I like those glasses. I'm trying to imitate you. <laughs> Come on down for Rip Warren fun. Amazing. You made it. Come on down for spectacular surprises. $35,000 just went $200,000. Oh, yeah. It's a new car. You need this in your life. Yes. Boy, is it going to be a good hour? The Price is Right. Weekday CBS Daytime. At Papa Murphy's, it's time to saddle up, giddy up, and eat up. Because right now you can get a large cowboy pizza for just ten dollars. Yeehaw! We make it, you bake it, Papa Murphy's. Now, CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. UMD men's hockey is heading on the road this weekend for another tough test against an NCHC opponent. There are a few names on the Bulldog roster that we've mentioned a lot since the beginning of the season. But one we haven't talked a ton about is Kobe Roth, a guy that Scott Sandlin says has been one of the most consistent assets on the team. To this date, Roth has 17 points on the season, 11 goals and 6 assists. He's also been fantastic on the power play with a career and team high and career high, 5 goals this season with the man advantage. Roth also played a critical part of this past weekend's series against North Dakota, opening and closing the scoring, scoring for the Dogs on Friday night with two goals in UMD's 7-4 win. He's playing with all sorts of confidence right now, and he's, I mean, he's scoring goals five on five, five on four, and he's just, it's going, it's going. Cool. For the War Road native, he says he is not doing anything differently. I think it's just what the teammates have been playing with. I mean, I'm not really trying to do anything differently. Pucks are finding the back of the net a little bit more, luckily for me this year. But uh, I'd say it's just my teammates I've been playing with. Uh, I've been fortunate. They've been making good plays around me, and I've been in the right spot at the right time. 
Of course, a player's modesty is overshadowed by the numbers. Here's a look at Roth's season to date. 24 games played this season. The sophomore has 11 goals and six assists. He already had three more goals than he had in total last year with 10 games still left to play. We also already mentioned his team high five power play goals, which is tied with Jackson Cates for the most on the UMD roster. Roth's second goal of the season came against Denver early this season. UMD will get to face the Pioneers on the road this weekend in the Mile High City for a crucial NCHC matchup. Puck drop is at 8.07 p.m. local time both Friday and Saturday. We will have highlights in the CBS3 News at 10. Shifting gears a bit, we are just three days away from Super Bowl 54 down in Miami, Florida. The Kansas City Chiefs are making their first Super Bowl appearance since 1970. Vikings fans will remember that one well, sadly. In the NFC, the San Francisco 49ers will look to add their sixth Vince Lombardi trophy to their trophy case. I mean, obviously, you're going to be hyped up. You're going to have that adrenaline rushing. Uh, I think you have to kind of manage it, uh, knowing that you're going to have a long pregame, a long uh, kind of ceremonies that, that will happen at the beginning of the game. But uh, I'm definitely going to be ready to play. And so for me, it's about just trying to manage my emotions, going out there with a clear head, uh, with the right mindset to go out there and play my best football. Who are you picking this Sunday? You want to go first? You go first. I, I watch for the commercials. <laughs> picking the Kristen's commercials. rooting for the commercials, Doritos I commercials. I'm excited yeah. about a commercial. I think that we should make the declaration right now. So I don't, Monday, I don't, Monday I don't like doing comes that. Around. They say defense wins championships, so I guess I'll go San Francisco. I agree with that in, in yeah. most sports, actually. I yeah. do. Okay, well, I don't want to pick San Francisco across the board, so I'm going to go Pat Mahomes okay. and the Kansas City Chiefs. So that's us locking it in okay. right okay. now. Pressing a button I don't lock my in. pick for the record. I think this is a true coin flip. No, that you already locked it in. I locked it in, it in you yes. Can't but go back I, I, on just, it. I don't love it. That's you all I'm saying. You pick the Niners, <laughs> Kristen picked the Niners, and we'll wager a pizza. The commercials. I'm not doing a pizza wager with you again. All right, we'll <laughs> wager... Pizza. Let me go to pizza. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Kelly. A 21-year-old student from South Korea has become a social media sensation after posting a video of his impressive Taekwondo skills. He showed off his skills by kicking a board four meters high after jumping and flipping Whoa. through the air. The clip had been viewed over a quarter million times on his Instagram account by today, a week after it was posted. Huh? I can do that. <laughs> No, I, okay, no, I, I, no, I can't. We're gonna, we'll be in a hospital. <laughs> and we'll come back on Monday and we'll let you know if Tony can indeed I can't. do that. Taekwondo. No, All, right. We'll <laughs> All right, Dave, how's the rest of the night looking here? Well, flurries tonight and a chance for a rain snow mix tomorrow. Oh. So, travelers on Friday, be careful. It is only a 30% chance, though. So, there's a good set of odds there that we might get a buy scot free. And then into the weekend, still warm till it cools down on Tuesday. All right, thanks, Dave. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back at 10.